Joining me now from Sunland, New Mexico, triple amputee Air Force veteran and president of We Build the Wall, Brian Colfidge. Brian, this is your dream. It looks like I can see over your right shoulder that it is effectively coming true. You have a sense of satisfaction right about now? Oh yeah, you know, it, it's just not my dream. It's protecting the American dream. And we've got the job done. We built the wall with the people's money. It's an amazing thing. Because, you know, here you started with uh, you know, yeah. the, the crowdsourcing. And I want to get to that in a minute. Uh, but first, tell me, uh, this is built with private funding, yes. But also, it's built on private property. How did you finagle that? What patriot volunteered their property? Well, there's a lot of patriots like this guy, hundreds of them. And we got all their information, and we're, we're reaching out to them. But this guy is a, a Vietnam veteran, Air Force fighter pilot. And he was fed up with having to live in fear. He was fed up with stuff being stolen off his property. And frankly, no American should have to live that way, especially a veteran who has defended my freedom. God bless that gentleman, and God bless you, too. Two Air Force uh, veterans. Sunland Park, though, apparently has a problem with what you're doing and uh, slapped the cease and desist on you all. Where does that stand? Sounds like you're still building. Where does the cease and desist stand? Well, the, it wasn't a cease and desist. It was actually a stop order, and we cleared it up real fast. And we, we have a lot of very powerful people who made sure everything we were doing was to, co to code. And when we explained it to them, ultimately, they had to let us continue building because what we were doing was, in fact, in regulation, as we proved. And uh, as of yesterday, they gave us the green light to begin building again. Awesome. So uh, tell me about the, this yeah. fencing. It looks very similar uh, to what uh, fencing exists and they're putting up right now, the federal government is doing, but is it slightly different? It is slightly different. It's the same design, but it is the exact same in terms of design. But we, we've incorporated a, a higher grade of steel that's all weather and doesn't, it doesn't deteriorate. It will last for 75 years or more. Also, we've included some high technology seismic sensors, fiber optic cables that run under the ground that detect movement, that detect pe people are trying to tunnel. If someone comes up and like touches the fence, it'll, it'll trigger that, it'll let Border Patrol know someone's touching the fence on the outside. We also have uh, very high-tech camera systems that are being installed, uh, a full lighting package with LEDs, and a paved road that goes all the way up the mountain. So the Border Patrol can respond to these emergencies in the, when there's someone coming across in a, in a timely manner. Before they said it would take them 30 minutes to get up this mountain, right. it now will take them 20 seconds. I'm smiling right now, Brian. You can't see me. I'm smiling because what you just described, the, the high technology mixed in with the low tech of the wall, uh, along with the, uh, the access road there, this is exactly what the Border Patrol has requested of the federal government. And it here is. we have the private sector coming in there and say, hey, federal government won't do it. We'll do it for you. And how, many, how, how, how long right. is this wall? About a half mile long? And how long did it take you to build? Uh, it's a little over a half mile, and uh, the wall itself, if we didn't have that stop order come down, it would have taken about three to four days to complete the entire wall. In an area... And, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to point that out. The Army Good. Corps of Engineers said, hey, it couldn't be done? They said it, it couldn't be done, or if, and then we also contacted a contractor who said if they were going to do it, it would take the government two years to build and $40 million. <laughs> and we came in in, in just a couple days. And it only cost us between six to eight million. There you go. So you haven't even used all your funding. The crowdsourcing uh, is how this all began. Yep. And the crowdsourcing, as we chronicled with you on this program a few months ago, uh, when you were still in the midst of, of raising money, kind of hit a snag. But clearly, you've been able to overcome that snag and, and deploy this money. That is correct. And you know, it's, it's because of the hardworking people, the hardworking Americans, and uh, all our donors. You know, this is. This is only possible because of the donors, and this is their money. They entrusted me with, the, with, with $20 million, which we're up to $23 million now. And we've been a good steward to this money. And as you can see behind my shoulder, we're building the wall. We made true on our promise. No matter what the fake news says, we got the job done, and we're going to build more wall just like this. And your presence and that wall is already changing behavior, isn't it, in terms of the coyotes and the drug cartels? It is. That that's right. We, we saw a group of migrants come down uh, a couple days ago. Uh, as soon as they, they, they're coming down out of the mountains, as soon as they saw that wall, all 30 of them did an about face and turned around and went back up that mountain. We got pictures of it. I posted on Twitter. Awesome. It's immediately having an impact to, to, to deter people. Immigration sanity uh, brought to a little sector of, <laughs> of New Mexico by the private sector because 
Unfortunately, the insanity of Washington, D.C. can't get the job done. Brian, great job, and thank you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.